Hey guys, how's it going? Boostmaster here. So recently I shared with you guys my new property, Boostmaster's Bungalow, and of course I'm super excited about this. And in today's video, we're finally breaking ground onto my new property. We're gonna be building a pump track and even some jumps and berms, but this is just the start. We've got so much room to play around with on this property. I've got about 10 acres to play with out here, so we're gonna be busy for a very long time. Since I moved into this new place last spring, a lot has changed here with the use of excavators as we change the land to our liking. Most of this is from my brother's direction as he will be making additions to the house and renovations on it for his family. Any of the sheds that were there were destroyed and we eventually will make a new one. There was one old broken shed filled with a bunch of garbage right here where I think is a great place to build a pump track. Now the fact is I'm very inexperienced at building pump tracks. All that I can claim is that way back in 2009 when I was in my mountain bike operations program on the Sunshine Coast, we built a pump track and I have since totally forgotten how to build pump tracks. So the problem is there's still a bunch of garbage laying around here because there used to be an old crappy shed right here. After that got demolished, it wasn't totally cleaned up. We've got some old shingles laying around. We've got boards laying around still. It was quite a mess. So the first step is to just get this all cleaned up, raked up, so we have fresh dirt to start building a pump track with. But unfortunately, it was a much bigger task than I had anticipated. As I kept raking it away, I kept encountering more garbage in the dirt. That old shed was like a time capsule of crap from the past probably 20 years. So much trash. I regret not taking advantage of the excavators when they were there, getting them to just dig down to all the good dirt right away. But I honestly did not realize stuff was this deep. Even though it's a lot of work, there's something satisfying about this though. Turning what was practically a garbage dump into something new, useful, and beautiful. We've got some old rusted up fencing just rolled up by some trees here. You didn't even realize they were there at first because they were buried by so much foliage. So one day, just for a couple hours, there was an excavator that had to come to the property to do a little bit of testing. And that's for the future construction that we were doing on this property. But this time I was not passing up the opportunity. So I got him to dig down about six to eight inches deep, make a big pile to make this process just a little bit easier for me. And another interesting thing we find is in this little area, there's a lot of dumped rock here. I don't believe it was there naturally. Yeah, because I'm putting that dirt through like the sifter yeah. on my, and then I'm separating all the rocks and. That is looking good, I'm very happy with that. Okay. All right guys, I'm pretty stoked on this. So we've dug down at least six to eight inches down here. Pretty much all the garbage is gone. However, there is still a lot of rocks around here as you can see. And otherwise, we're just left with a big pile of garbage mixed with a whole ton of rocks and some good dirt. But now we've got a pretty good level ground for our pump track. I'm gonna be sifting through all this with my little uh, sifter there and my wheelbarrow. I'm putting all the rocks into one pile. I'm gonna put the dirt into another pile and the garbage is going in another pile over here. I got my friends over to help one day, so we're gonna get some more progress done. So we were starting to make some plans laying it out but we ended up scrapping that plan and just go for the simple oval shape for now. Basically, this pump track is gonna be enough work as it is, and since it's on my own property, I can always change it and make it better in the future. We'll use some of these rocks as filler. Otherwise, I kinda wanna save the bigger ones for something else. And then we can use like this sifted dirt can be like the kind of the top layer. Right now, we're gonna be building up this berm a lot more. We gotta make this more of like a horseshoe berm so we can really keep our speed really well. We're gonna have a bunch of rollers here in a straight line. Coming into that berm, it'll be a nice horseshoe 180 degree berm, but we're gonna make it sick.
So we're making some good progress. We still got a lot of work ahead of us, but we're finally starting to see how this is actually gonna look. But we're not just working on a pump track today though. While my friends are still here, we're gonna go build a step down to ride on this nice hill here. This is sick. Like I'm so down to build. Right now. Mm -hmm. I, want to, I want to build a big drop here. We need one yeah, yeah. feature at least. I know, I, I agree. So we're just gonna take a break from building the pump track and see how quickly we can build a step down here. At least then we'll have something to ride. So Wesley's gonna rake out the run-in while Josh and Alex make the landing. We're gonna make a run-in. Come in here, step down right there. Landing probably somewhere where those boys are. It's gonna be awesome. Sit. So basically we're building the lip right on top of this old rotten stump, which is not the most sustainable place for building a lip because it's a weak foundation. But honestly, for now, it's all good. But to make it a more solid foundation, we're just gonna put some rocks down first to make it a bit more solid. And then Josh will dig some nice golden dirt to pile on top. So obviously it's really fun to be able to build tons of stuff on my property here, but I can also really appreciate the privacy that it gives me as well. And I find privacy can be in shorter supply these days. Though it's not as easy to buy your own property, but did you know there's something called virtual privacy? And this gets into today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. So it keeps your information private by encrypting your data, which is to say that it's blurring it out. So one of the cool benefits of using a VPN like Surfshark is getting access to blocked content on services like Netflix from other countries. I like to be able to watch movies like Spider-Man Far From Home, even if I'm far from home, because it's actually available on the Canadian Netflix, but not the American Netflix. And I am Canadian myself, so what if I'm traveling? Or if I just want to access something based in the UK, for example, now I can do that. And of course, this works for any content that's restricted in your region, like YouTube content as well. And one of the really cool things about Surfshark is under one account, you can have unlimited devices, which makes it really handy. And if you sign up now, I have a special deal for you. You'll get an 83% discount if you use my code BOOSTMASTER and an extra three months for free. So check out the link in the description. If you've never tried a VPN before, now is definitely the time, especially since they offer a 30 day money back guarantee. Otherwise, what do you guys say we get back to building that step down? Goes by quick, so many guys. Yeah. Stomping on that dirt is always the best way to pack it in really good. And this lip is already feeling very solid. So the landing looks good enough. We didn't pack it or anything, but who cares? It should be fine. And Alex is gonna guinea pig it for us. <laughs> She's a flatty boy. Let's send her boy. I like how this took us like, what, 45 minutes? Yeah, yeah. it's a nice jump too. Yeah, Woo! Woo! Hey, hey! Um, hey, hey! Yo! 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 Yeah! Let's do it again! <laughs> <laughs> How was the impact? It was soft. Oh. Oh. There's a bit of a bounce action going on there. <laughs> yeah. Just so soft. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. All right guys, so this really is quite a bit of work making this pump track and even just cleaning up all the garbage here is a huge undertaking. I even found this pocket like right here of a bunch more garbage dug way down. So yes, the pump track will be pretty simple and basic at first, but you know what? If we want, we'll always have time to make additions, make expansions if we really want. We got more space up here, through the trees maybe. So one pretty standard recommendation that Imba was giving me was a 75 inch radius. That would make about 150 inch diameter from middle to middle. Now this is too short. It's showing closer to around 10 feet, 120 inches. And yeah, this is quite tight. What I'm gonna do is expand it to 150 inches. And so this line that I made here is basically that. But one thing I was realizing while researching more pump tracks is there's always a roller going right into the berm as well as the roller coming right out of the berm. 
so that's basically what these piles of rocks here are for now, which means basically we're just shifting this closer here. I actually rarely ever ride pump tracks, so I figured I should actually go check one out. Chilliwack had a new one made a little bit ago, and it's pretty sick. They have an easy and an advanced one. So now I can see and feel exactly how they work. And yes, for every single berm here, there was one of those rollers right attached as you enter and exit it. And I can really see how necessary that is for really carrying your speed out of it. Since when you're on the berm itself, you don't have a way of gaining any speed. So it's smart to have a downward pump right as you straighten out. All right guys, so at this point, we've got about half of it mostly roughly done. So what I wanna do now is do some measurements to make sure that we're gonna keep the spacing accurate and also making the lines parallel with each other. So what I figure is making another roller around here and then roller into the berm. So basically just duplicating what we've already made right here now. 150 inches. We're definitely fraying apart. So we've gotta move this inward more. So the distance I'm going with for the rollers is 120 inches apart from peak to peak. So now I measure where the next rollers go, keep them 150 inches apart, make some markers with rocks, and then start to pile them up. So I was still spending more time sifting through that garbage pile, extracting the garbage apart from the rocks and the good dirt. It does feel good knowing that I'm cleaning the ground, getting back to a bit more of a natural kind of dirt. The stuff I was finding most often was just broken shingles and rusty nails. But at a certain point, it's just too time consuming and I just ended up pushing it away to revisit it later. So it decided to snow a little bit last night as well as freeze overnight which is really frustrating when I'm trying to get this done as soon as possible. Thankfully it is warming up now, so I can actually get to work on it again. But it is Thursday right now, the weather's gonna be really good for the next couple days, and then the rains will come. So I'm gonna try and get this done by Saturday, and then I can get this video finished ASAP. All right, so I pretty much cleared away this whole area where I'm gonna start building the berm. I shoveled all this dirt as far back as I needed it to go. The berm is gonna go about as far back as this tree. Now this dirt is still that unsifted dirt where there's still trash in it. Uh, we've even got some barbed wire right here. I can uh, deal with that later. But there's still shingles and rusty nails in here. I would prefer not to use this dirt for the actual berm. Otherwise for now, I got some logs, some rocks. We can start building up the back end of the berm for filler. And then let's uh, start shaping this thing up. Oh man, you guys, it's really coming together. This is so exciting. We've definitely got a few more touch-ups to do, like finishing those rollers there and here, making sure everything has a nice kind of smooth curvature to it all. But tomorrow is Saturday, got some help coming over, and we're gonna finish this thing up. Just about there. 
All right, guys, so we're finally finished. Me and Everett uh, finally finished packing it all in uh, Saturday afternoon. It's supposed to rain actually pretty soon. So we kind of finished just in time and now we're gonna test ride it and see how it goes. That looks so good. Just amazing, uh, like what it used to be. Oh, so much garbage. I know. Let's test ride it. Here we go. We don't have the greatest starting point though. We just kind of like, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> just testing it out on the hardtail first of all. Though I am pretty sure the BMX will be the best on this track. All right. Still really soft. <laughs> Yeah, I think I can tell that it's a little uphill there. Okay. It's a little more difficult going up here. Mm hmm It's easier going down. But, you know, it's working. It looks a little soft still, maybe. Yeah, that is true. It's not the... I feel like the berms are fairly tight. It's tiring. Tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you're coming around here, it does feel like you're even just the first roller. It feels like you're you're slowing down into it, like you're kind of going like up into it. Yeah, it's it's still quite a learning experience for me. Like. Oh, there you go. Now, since I am a perfectionist, I want this to roll as good as possible. So I can see yeah. that even after it gets super hard packed, there's still going to be changes that'll need to be made. At first, I was thinking, oh, maybe it has to do with the roller height. But then I was learning more that no, actually, it's more to do with the ratio. There's a one to one ratio that I was actually going for here. I've now realized maybe a three to two ratio or even two to one could work even better. Fine tuning. That was good. The reason going up this way is like easier. <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of finding that. And then this way. But I feel like even though you're going downhill, the rollers you're on right now, you're still losing speed going over yeah, them. That's the weird thing going this way. And like I said, I've been realizing now it's more to do with yeah. the ratio. Some of those rollers are a bit too fat they take too long to get up and to get down. So it's a bit harder to really pump through them. Everett was getting the hang of this now too. And we were finding it was working better in this counterclockwise direction. There we go. Yeah, right at the end there, I, I got it going without settling. Yeah. Deep, so I think with some hardening and fine tuning, I think these things will be sweet. Yeah, I agree. So you remember that step down we made earlier? I'm gonna show this to Everett. So we're both gonna hit it today. Yeah, the landing, we just kinda like raked it clear. So it's like soft, but it's all good. So yeah, the lip is looking nice and sturdy. Okay. Whoa, whoa, oh, that's hilarious. The soft landing. I felt like I landed in a good spot, but you know what? I think I was like, cause the landing's kind of here. I think I landed like there though, which is okay. But it, but you could tell when you landed, like you slowed down because of the softness. So that was a little bit sketch. Holy Yo! <laughs> Holy <Woo! laughs> it's a good size, huh? Whoa! I just sink in so much. It's a bit sketch. The landing really needs some work. So I started doing a few touch-ups. I mostly liked what I did, but then I was also changing my mind about a couple things too. I think I actually need more of a dip. When I exit this berm, I need more of a dip down to like pump through. I'm flattening it too much so it doesn't work. And that relates to how I was finding out I needed to change these ratios a little bit. That has to do with the crest versus the trough. Ok, 
Okay, I'm starting to get the hang of this here. Whoops, that was working well. It was really tiring, but I'm getting more progress. Every time I work on it, it's getting better and better. So I think I'm really figuring it out. This has been quite a learning experience for sure. But otherwise you guys, that'll be it for today's video. The rain has just started to come Saturday afternoon. Gotta get this video out by Monday. So this is the first video building on Boostmaster's bungalow. So excited to share what more we have in store. I'll be perfecting this pump track. I'll be working on those other new lines up there. There's a lot of plans already and uh, it's gonna take some time. So, so I'm not gonna be posting build videos all the time. It takes time to get this stuff built and I don't really wanna be on such a strict schedule like, like I was for this video. I was really trying to get this up as soon as I could after I revealed my property. And uh, the pump track was taking longer than I was expecting. So I don't want to give myself such a strict schedule for my other builds. But we've got so much fun stuff coming. We're gonna build some awesome jumps. Gonna jump into that natural kind of landing there. So if you guys are excited to see more, let me know in the comments what you want to see. Hit subscribe, like the video, check out my Patreon page if you want to support what I'm doing. You can pledge monthly for some extra bonuses like extended cuts, early cuts, um, some bonus content here and there. Otherwise, I'm really looking forward to what we're going to do this year. So uh, stay tuned and uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.